Hello and welcome to an Excitec software update video. My name is Terry Dean, I'm one of the application specialists here at Excitec and I'm going to take you through just some of the new features of AutoCAD LT 2016. And to kick off with we have a new tab or a tab that's given a new name um, called Start. It's laid out similar to what it was in previous releases. Uh, if I go to the Learn page here um, again, there's some subtle changes here. Uh, the tips section here, which previously was simply called tips, is now called learning tips, and that will be regularly updated uh, at regular intervals. So keep an eye out for any of the tips that are, are added here. We can disable the start tab if need be. Um, I'll cover that in just a moment. Um, these tabs, when you wanted to create a brand new tab, you actually did create a new tab looking at exactly the same sort of layout that you see here, which was a bit annoying because you may have simply just wanted to create a new drawing. And so you clicked on here to create a new tab and then you clicked on here to create a new drawing. Well, they've shortcutted that now. So just by clicking on here, you instantly create uh, new drawings, as you can see. So it's very simple and it seems to be a much better idea of working with that. Right, let me just delete some of these. Okay, now I did say you can disable this. There is a, a variable called start mode. Currently on. Um, if I set it to zero, it will turn it off. I'm not going to do that as for reasons I'm going to explain in a second. Um, if you do turn it off, then of course this tab will disappear. Um, and um, the next time you load AutoCAD LT up on your screen, um, it will just be a blank screen and no startup, uh, no start tab. Um, if you turn it back on again, uh, you'd expect it to appear instantly. Nope, it doesn't do that. If you were to um, close uh, AutoCAD down and then reopen it, that's when it's going to reappear. So for obvious reasons, I'm not going to do that. Right, just delete that file and go into one of these early files that I created for, for demonstration purposes. Right, Rev Clouds. Um, been a couple of changes here, a couple of enhancements. Um, we now have three tools as opposed to just the one. Uh, freehand is the, the same method that you would have used before. You just drag it around and when you get to where you started, it finishes. Um, the rectangular Rev Cloud is, I suppose, self explanatory. You just pick two diagonally opposite corners there. And then we have the polygonal method, which uh, does exactly that. We can draw a polygonal rev cloud. There we go. Um, if uh, I wanted to add an additional piece on here, um, we can repeat the command, choose modify within that feature, pick on the bit you want to extend, let's say, add new feature, and as soon as I put it there, it gives me the option to delete other segments. See that? Okay, so if I click on there, I've achieved what I want to do. So I'll just delete these. Okay, so they're, they're just sort of uh, two additional features there really I've outlined. Um, we could previously uh, use um, ordinary objects to um, convert to a rev cloud. Uh, so I'm just going to draw a, uh, a circle there. Okay, which we will convert. I'm going to draw a rectangle around there and I'll draw an ellipse in the middle here like so. So if I reload the RevCloud tool again, doesn't matter which version you use, we choose object, click on there, enter and we've done it. So if I do repeat that command, object, once again we've done it and then repeat that command, object and convert that one. Easy. But uh, nice little change they've done here. The grips are just as if they were still on the circle look. So it makes that a much easier item to to edit look. We can elongate the ellipse or widen the ellipse like so. Okay, so that little uh, addition there has made that a lot easier to, to edit. So that's Rev Clouds. Uh, moving on. Um, M-Text. Now, if you wanted to put a frame around here, very, very easy now. If I single click on that piece of text, bring up the properties palette. It's down here, look. There's a little t little uh, field here that we can say yes. And we've now got precisely what we require. Um, you don't have to do them individually, by the way. You can pick on uh, multiple multi-line text objects 
And um, if I come down here and say yes to that, then they're now on, aren't they? Okay, easy. Each one can be modified using grips. So if I wanted that wider, longer, and you can see they've all got the same same functions. So again, so if I you can do that, it's very, very easy. Okay, so that's a new M text feature via the properties palette. Now a huge change has been made to this program, this this particular feature, dimension. They've actually introduced a brand new dimension tool. Um, a tool that uh, makes dimensioning very easy now. Um, just to point out that the current layer is layer zero, however, I'm going to change that. Now, I've deliberately created three dimension layers to demonstrate a feature of this new tool. Um, I'm going to set dim linear as the current layer, then come over here and choose this new dimension tool. And what's new about it is it knows by the object that you hover over the type of dimension you require. Um, so I'm just going to place a, a linear dimension here, just put it up here, so like so. Um, I'm going to tell it I want a baseline dimension, which it allows me to do. So I'm now going to click on there in a minute to tell it that's going to be my baseline. But just cast an eye on the command line. There's an offset facility here. This is um, dim line spacing or uh, dimension line spacing. It's a setting that's normally set within the dimension style, which is still the case. However, you can adjust it here at the moment of placing it. Um, so I could choose offset and put a new value and you can see it's currently set to 25 at the moment. Um, just a word of advice there. If you do uh, or are using a dimension scale within the style, uh, any value that you type in there will be multiplied by that value. So just bear that in mind. Um, so if I click on here, bring that across to here, need to put my own snaps back on, left click on there. And then if I choose cancel, I'm still in the command. I can now proceed to put other dimensions on. So if I change to a new layer, now this is new. I wouldn't have been able to do this before with the other uh, traditional dimensioning tools. So if I choose dim angular, I can now uh, click on there, turn my O snap off again, click on there, click on that piece there, and look, it knows that I need to generate an angle. So I'll just show you that again, click on there, on there and look I've now generated an angle. Change the layer again there's the flexibility there of being able to change layers and if I hover over an arc or a circle it gives me the option of, of losing a, a radius dimension in the tool or I could choose diameter change it to diameter so I might choose no 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 actually I'll stick to radius there we are put it on there and um, but this time I'm going to choose diameter which is chosen to me by default Likewise there as well. And then in here, I'm going to put a radius on there. So see, look how intuitive that is, how quickly that's going to make dimensioning. And there's other features in there as well, which uh, we could take ages looking at. But um, that's not bad, is it? Now, one feature that is in there is layer uh, look down here. What that does is enables you to set a layer thereafter that that particular dimension tool would use automatically. Um, so if you set that, um, it means that the ability to go in here and choose alternative layers would be disabled. So what you're saying is from now on, whenever I choose that dimension tool, always put my dimensions on this layer. Um, but that's not the only way we can do that. So let me just come completely out of there. There is, in fact, um, a, another system variable uh, called dim uh, layer. And, and that will do exactly the same. Uh, so here, I can go straight to the system variable, type in the name of the layer there, and from then on, in this file only, um, so if we wanted it in other files, so there's obviously a setting we'd have to set up in the template file. Uh, from this moment onwards, every time I chose the new dimension tool, um, it would only use that layer. Other uh, dimensioning tools would act in the same way as previous versions. Uh, one other thing, if you have any problem with, um, we haven't got any problem here, but if you had a problem with your um, text here, uh, wrapping, not wrapping correctly, you'll notice there's a little uh, option to double click on the text. And if there was a string of text there that was wrapping and you wanted to either force the wrap or uh, stretch out the wrap, you can easily do that here as well. So that's another feature of dimensions. 
Okay, moving on. Um, there's a brand new object snap. Uh, something we were unable to do in the past is we couldn't snap to the center of a polygonal shape, or in this case, the uh, center of a polyline shape there, there, and there. <coughs> um, so if I go up to um, the circle command, let's say, let's change my current layer to component, and um, my object snaps are not on at the moment. But if I go to my list of object snaps here, you see this is the brand new one, of geometric center. And uh, so if I just collapse that, and now you'll see it puts this little asterisk in the middle of the geometric shape. So if I choose circle again, come over there, there it is. There's the geometric center. And uh, if I go near an arc or something like that, then that still works the same, you see. So if I go over there, it will find the center of that arc. If I go over there, it'll find the center of that circle. But if I come into here, it now finds the center of that geometric shape. So I'm sure that will come in very, very useful. Now, uh, system variables. Um, it is sometimes occurs that when you download a Lisp routine or any type of customized routine, that in the background, some of your um, traditional settings that you normally use get changed. And uh, it's only later on down the line that you discover that there's been some sort of change made. Um, well, you now have this thing called the system variable monitor. You can start typing it in and it will bring it up for you. So if I type in sys there, sysvar monitor, there it is. Okay. And you'll see in here what you can do. You can see that someone has previously changed the, the uh, system variable here. Uh, they've currently set it to zero look. Um, when really um, the preferred option was was one. Yes, they wanted to mirror the text. Um, so <clears throat> while I'm in here, if I choose to, if I say reset all there, see it's set that current value, the value that someone had changed it to, back to its initial setting. So if there's a, a series of um, system variables that you want to keep set to a particular, uh, the particular values, then that's the way you can do it. So if I go back in there again, um, we could say, well, in future, um, I, I want that to be off. So that's my preferred setting. And um, choose reset all. So that's now going to be the preferred setting. OK, so if I was to go in there and change that, this is what that monitor does. If I change it to one, hit return, look, up comes a little balloon notification label here and uh, tells me that that actually is not conforming to how I want my uh, ver my variables to be. And it tells me this is, the, this is the preferred and this is what it's been changed to. So now, if I choose reset all, it will put it back to what it was previously. So it's ignored the one look and kept it, uh, kept it turned off. So it could be a very useful function. If you find it annoying because you're always changing variables all the time uh, you can obviously uncheck these tick boxes and that won't won't actually occur if you find you think the list is a bit short well you can edit it look you can go into here and add uh, any other variable that you use on a regular basis and add that to the list and set it to its what you would prefer it to be and then from then on it will actually monitor that in future okay so that's the the system variable monitor some other things, um, in previous releases, um, uh, prior to 2015, there was an icon down here uh, for locking the user interface. It was down here on the status bar down here. Um, unfortunately, in 2015, they removed it and uh, people thought it had gone, but it hadn't gone. You actually could type in lock UI and you could bring it back. Uh, well, it's now back as a, an icon. Um, so here it is, it's here. So if, if you don't see it on, when you initially install your version of LT, uh, you just go into the customize menu down here and you'll see it's now on there. So uh, it's back. Um, something else as well, the um, object isolation icon, this one here, this one allows us to either hide objects without turning off the layer or isolating objects. Um, it uh, has, has been there a long time, but it was one of those icons that you actually couldn't hide from the status bar. Uh, again, it's been added to the uh, customize um, list, and uh, you'll see here, if you don't want it to be visible, you can actually 
turn it off so it's not there anymore okay um again another feature that was introduced in 2015 was this it's called the gallery um, if I go to the insert tab and choose insert block um, it will show me any blocks that are currently available or, or have already been uh, loaded or created in this file in the form of a nice little thumbnail so you can click on there and just bring them in in that manner um, once again if it's something that, that uh, you, you're not happy with you don't like it you can now turn it off uh, so by typing in uh, gallery view um, you can switch it to zero and it will uh, disable that feature if you, you're not a fan of it. Um, if you are a fan of it, good news, uh, they've actually extended it to other things as well. So uh, whereas before it was only um, blocks that used it, you now have it for uh, dimension styles, multi-leaders and tables as well. Okay, moving on. Um, Right, I'm just going to move to this file, large amounts, an unusual name. Um, yeah, what's, what I've done here is um, just drawn lots and lots of objects just to show you something. They've actually improved uh, the graphical interface in the, in, in the sense that when you moved large amounts of items before, you, you would get this sort of flickering and while it was trying to refresh itself and that could slow things down. Um, well, well, they've dramatically improved this. So if I choose all these objects and you can see there's a uh, 1600 of them and uh, as I move it across the screen look at that where's the flicker there is none so it's it's very very slick um, and you'll find that in lots of other ex 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 drawings and stuff that you you come across so it's made it a lot more sort of a um, efficient uh, sort of uh, visually as you can see and, and, of, and of course it's less time consuming waiting for it to keep regening before refreshing itself before you can place it. Um, another thing, uh, I call it the buffers, AutoCAD's buffers. Um, when you rolled the wheel uh, to a certain point, there came a point within AutoCAD that um, it wouldn't roll anymore. You know, it, some people used to think that their mouse had uh, broke. Um, but of course it wasn't that. It was the fact that it couldn't zoom any further without forcing a regeneration. Uh, well, that is no longer the case. Um, you, you won't have to force a regeneration anymore. It will automatically do it for you, as you can see. So you shouldn't come, come across any invisible buffers anymore, as I call them. Uh, they've gone. So you'll be able to pan and zoom without having to force any more regens, which again is a, is a nice touch. Okay, moving on to something slightly different, um, references, X references. I'm going to go into this, this file here. It's blank at the moment. Um, we're going to attach an external reference. And um, something that has, has been a problem in the past is where someone has inserted an X reference and they've wanted to, to do something with the layers. So let's have a look at that. So if I bring up the reference palette and I'll attach... This file here. There we are. Okay. So at this point, there's no indication that something may be wrong. So what if you now wanted to, because it is an X reference, you now wanted to change the color of all the layers. So if I click on here, choose all the external reference layers, and tell them that they need to be a different color. So I'll use this sort of light blue color here and pick OK and then I come across a problem and the problem is that the the hexagon objects uh, appear to be not responding and that's purely because um, if I just undo what I've done there okay it's purely because and we could have seen here that was something wrong here can you see that the circles are indeed blue the squares are indeed red but the hexagon which should have been green is in fact this yellow or orange color and that tells us that someone within the external reference file has actually changed that entity from by layer to by color which would now require us to annoyingly and maybe no didn't really want to do it um, go back into that file and change find those objects and change them onto by layer well you don't need to do that now um, if I there's another system variable. Uh, if I type in xref uh, override, 
this can be either switched on or off um, it's currently off and simply by setting that to one now you can see straight away the objects are acting like they are by layer so they're using their by layer color which was green and which obviously means now that if I was to change those layers to a, a different color if I choose a, that same color I used before they all act as if they were on R on by layer or all by layer. So it's as easy as that. There's no more having to go back into that file. And uh, so if I bring that up again, just to show that if I switch it back to zero, it goes back to being by color. And if I switch it to one, we're now back to it being uh, by layer again. So a nice little, fi nice little easy fix there for a, an annoying little problem. Right, uh, nearly finished. The last thing I'm going to show you now is is a new feature that's been added to the tabs up here. If I want to close all the, both I had lots of drawings here, and I wanted to close them all down without having to go to each one individually, uh, and just leave this one open. Well, it's now available on the right click here. So if I come down here and I choose close all other drawings, I'll be asked if I want to save those. So I'm going to say no, and sure enough, if I look up here. You see it's the only file I have open. Okay, uh, so that was just some of the features. If you want to look at uh, for any more, please feel free to go and look at our website. Um, I hope that's been of use to you and uh, maybe I'll see you in training sometime. Thanks very much. Bye.